What's going on guys, Casual Savage here, and in this video I'm showing you how to use Premiere Pro. So when you first open up Premiere Pro, this is what you'll be presented with, and all you have to do is select New Project. Now for this part, most of it you really don't need to touch from here. So the first thing you do up here is the name of the project. So I'm just going to call this project. Then it says location. This is where it's going to be saved. Select browse to change it. So I made a new folder on my desktop known as project and I'm going to select this folder. And now this is where this file will save. So this is my Premiere Pro. Now the reason why I say this is my Premiere Pro is because I've changed things around. This isn't the same format you would see it. So this is the layout how you would probably see it and you will notice I did change mine all the way around and for me it's because it made things a lot easier in terms of editing. So what do we actually have on screen? Well up here would be the video that you drag into your timeline. You'd be able to watch it back here and you can see there are some controls at the bottom which we will get into later on. Over to the side here is source clips. Now when you import media down here in the bottom left then you can click on it and you'll see you'll be able to preview it here. Again, we have the exact same buttons here that we do have over on this other side. Now effect controls is the next thing up here. And when you click on your video in your timeline, coming to effect controls, you can actually control quite a lot. You can control the scale, you can control the position, and there's a quite a lot of other things you can control as well. Next is audio clip mixer. This is where you can see how high your levels are when you're talking. And then of course here we have the metadata. Completely optional if you want it, to be honest, it's been no use to me. So the first thing I'm gonna be doing is showing you how to customize the layout. And I always recommend that you customize it to a point where you're comfortable in editing. So first of all, metadata, like I just mentioned, it's not useful for me. So I can close this panel. Audio mixer I never use because I already do my audio in Audacity, so I can close this panel. Um, but these two I'm gonna keep. Now, coming down here, I'm going to left click here and I'm going to drag this up to this bar. Now you can see everything that was down here has gone up there. So I'll be going through the next thing, media browser. This is basically access any file on your computer. So it's probably quite good if you have a big project with loads of different videos, just find uh, where the video is. And then of course, um, click it here and you can just simply drag and drop onto your timeline much quicker than going opening up another folder. Next one is libraries. Again, this is something I don't use. Some people may find it useful. So I'm going to close out of this. We also have info. This is info on a video you insert. It'll give you all the details, such as the frame rate and the uh, size of the video. Again, not useful for me because I know the videos I do. Close panel. And then we go over to effects. Now be careful, this is not effects controls. This is just primarily effects. And you'll see here we get access to video transitions, video effects, audio transitions, and audio effects. We also have markers. Um, again, not useful for me here, but markers in general are useful, but I can close out of this. And then same for history, not useful for me. I can close out of this. Now this is my ideal editing setup. I've got a long timeline here. Over to the side, I have my audio gain. And here I have my simple tools that we will get into. So you can see, I now have hold of a video. I've just dragged and dropped it right here. So there you go. You can see I dragged and dropped it straight into the timeline. So now I'm going to be talking about the timeline. So this is in uh, minutes right now. And you'll see it goes into 5, 10, 15. Now the reason for that is because we're quite zoomed out. But if you come down here, you can see you can left click and drag. And now the min each minute's going to appear, and as we get closer, it's going to go to seconds, just like that. So you can be very accurate. You can see you can go all the way to milliseconds like this. Over to the side here, we have video and audio tracks. So whenever you insert a video, the video is also going to always going to be above. It's always going to be up here. Whenever you insert audio, it's going to be on this track down here. And you can see it says A1, A2, A3, V1, V2, V3 for V, video, A, audio. Now I know it just shows three, however you can always add more by right clicking here, add a track, and you can see video four is showing. We can right click here, add a track, and now that's audio four showing. So let's get on to the um, tools over here. Now the first one up here is just a move tool, which allows you to move your things in your timeline. It also allows you to highlight things in your timeline. So if you ever have a bunch of things in your timeline and you want to move it all at once, just left click and drag out. 
and you'll see this box will come up just make sure everything is highlighted you can see this has turned white and if I come up the audio is also covered as well and I can just drag them at the same time the next one is track select forward tool now it's not one I use but it can be useful for some you can see at the bottom left it says click to select all clips to the right in all tracks so if I left click you can see it's going to select the clip like so the next thing we have is the ripple edit tool it's not one I particularly use the next one is a razor tool now this is going to be one everyone uses so what is the razor tool basically um, you'll see if I come across on my timeline I start talking right here so this part at the beginning is a complete waste of time all I need to do is get that razor tool select it right here and as you can see the video has been split but if we come back to the move tool we can left click this and press delete on our keyboard to remove that part and we can drag this back and you can see the razor tool has split it and the move tool has deleted that unnecessary part we didn't need so again right here as well I take a pause press C for the um, shortcut to bring up the razor tool and then you can split it here and then I'm gonna split it here again and then you can press V and you can select it and delete Razor tool, very simple to use. Razor tool and move tool is probably going to be the main ones you will be using. Next, we have the slip tool. Again, something I don't use, but it may be useful for some. We have the pen tool, so this allows you to do any masking. We have the hand tool, which is basically scrubbing across your timeline. It's going to be pretty useful if you have quite a lot of footage and you're zoomed in quite close, you're trying to be quite accurate. And the final one we have down here is the type tool. Of course, everyone will be using this. So I'm going to select the type tool. And you can see nothing happens just yet. What you need to do is head over to your screen up here and just left click, drag out a box with some text. Now, this box has come up. What you need to do is type in some text. So I'll just type in casual savage and this can all be edited. So where you edit all of this, you head over to effect controls and you'll see right here we have control of our text. So it tells me the text and it tells you in brackets what the text says and here you can change your font anything you want to so I'll pick the Pepsi for this you do need to highlight your text then come here and select the font changes like that you can choose the style um, Pepsi only has regular because it was already quite a bold font and it is also italic already but this is where you can change all them options if your font is different you can size it up you can see it goes all the way to 400 but you can come here and type in a custom number if it's too small so maybe like 800 Okay, I put 16,000, uh, 1600. Uh, I'm going to put that back down. Then we can center the text like that. Then if you have paragraphs, you can see you can justify how you want it. So you can have it to the left, the middle. Um, you can have it so the lines are always equal, or you can have it just to the right. Here is the tab width. Here is the letter spacing. So you can see like that, it can be useful for maybe music videos. We have kerning here, which allows you to move the text. So if I drag it to the left, it's going to move my text right. And if I drag it right, it's going to move my text to the left. We have leading, which allows us to choose um, the spacing between our text. So if I just put Savage on a separate line, uh, highlight this, and you can see the spacing between casual and Savage has now increased. You can get pretty creative using that. Next one is baseline shift. So right now this is considered center for the text, but if we use this, you can see it's going to move to a different position. And the final one we have to zoom, to zoom, 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 I think. Anyway, um, not really understanding the use of this. It just looks like it's pushing the text a tiny bit. Something I've never used. Um, anyway, coming down, now we have the fill of the text. So I'm going to pick a red. You can see that changes the color. We can add a stroke, so check the box, and I'm going to add a black stroke, OK. And over to the side, you can see it says 1. Now, this is how thick the stroke's going to be. So I'll pick 10, and you can see that stroke is a lot thicker now, and you can see it more vibrant. Last thing you can add to the text is a shadow. Um, again, completely optional if you want to do this. There's the opacity of the shadow, so I'll put it about 40%. Uh, the angle of the shadow, I'm going to go... Um, minus or 270 and then this part right here is the distance so you can choose how far you want the shadow to be apart I'll keep it like that and then here you can blur the shadow if you want to now I'd only recommend blurring it if the opacity is more up like so so then it'll be visible 
otherwise it won't be useful. But that's that for text, that's how you edit it. And of course, when you wanna move it, just move it here. And now you can see the text is on screen. Now, just before we go any further, I'm gonna be showing you a couple more tools which I think are useful. So earlier I mentioned markers that I do use them. So for example, here we have a split. Actually, no, for here, I want the text to be added in. Let's say I'm focusing on something else for now, but later on, I wanna make sure the text is here. What we do is come here and lay down a marker. And you can see this marker has been laid down. And now we're gonna combine another tool which is gonna be useful. So I also recommend having the snap tool enabled. So I want my text right on that marker. I'm just gonna drag the text and you can see it snaps into place like that. And it also snap onto the ends of stuff as well, just like that. And it also uh, snaps onto this blue line here. Now, if you're ever playing back your video and it's lagging, what you can do is come down here and just change it to a quarter. If it's still lagging, try sizing down the video up here. So, oops, try sizing down the video here to about 10%. Um, it's gonna be difficult to see, but that's what you're gonna have to do if it is lagging. Now, moving on to the video controls here, uh, we have back one frame, we have a play button, we have forward one frame, we have the go to out, we have the go to in, and then here we have lift, we have extract and here we have export frame which is basically a screenshot of your video so i'll come across where the text is and you want to make sure this is on full if you are ever going to take a screenshot and simply select export frame you can see this is going to be the name of what you're going to call it so i'm just going to call it project screenshot and then you can choose the format you want it in you can see there's all these formats right here i'll pick a jpeg and you can also import it into your project if that's what you want it for, then you can do that. If not, maybe just for a thumbnail, you don't need to check it. You can see the path is currently saved to this right here, and that's not the folder we selected at the start. So you need to come over to browse, and you can see I've selected my folder, and I'm gonna select select folder. Now you can see it's being saved there, I'm gonna select okay, and you can see in that folder is that same screenshot we just took, if it loads. Hello. There we go, and you can see in good resolution as well. Now there's a lot to cover. I'm trying to make sure I cover everything right now. And what I'm gonna be showing you next is the effects tab. So up here where you can add on transitions, video effects, audio transitions, audio effects. So I'm gonna show you some transitions. So for the text, for example, the text is just gonna be popping straight up, pretty harsh movement. And let's say we want it to slide in. So I'm gonna come to the slide tab, and I'm going to come to the slide. I'm going to drag and drop this onto the start of that text. And you'll see it's covering some of the text. That's because that's the transition time. But I also want it to slide off. I don't want the text to just go off. So I'm going to drag on the slide to the end as well. Now, nothing's come up. How do we customize the sliding? So select this text here and come over to effect controls. So if I play it through, you can see the text is going to slide in and it's going to slide out like that so zoom in here and you can see you can adjust the time of how long it takes to zoom in currently by default when you add it on it's going to take a second i think but if you drag it across you can see it tells you the duration and this is now going to be a lot longer so playing it through it's a lot slower now you can see in the effects controls we get more control of it we can have a border width border color and we can even reverse it so for the last one especially I'm going to select it, I'm going to come down, I'm going to select reverse. Now what this is going to do, you can see, it's going to go back out that way nice and smooth, instead of just wiping itself off the screen. So that's how you pretty much use the uh, transitions, it's really simple. And then for video effects, here are quite a lot. I'm just going to use a blur for this example, Gaussian blur. I'm just going to drag and drop this onto this clip right here. And then nothing's happened just yet, head over to effect controls. And you can see Gaussian blur, blurriness, I'll put it to 50. And you can see there's the difference. Now you can animate this, so the way you do some animations in uh, Premiere Pro. So this is gonna be the exact same way for literally everything you do in terms of animating in the effects controls. Toggle the animation here. And then I'm gonna come across on my timeline to about two seconds. And I'm gonna turn the blurriness back to zero. Now it's gonna give the effect that is blurry and it's gonna come into focus like that, pretty simple. 
Now, if your audio is too quiet on one of your video tracks, then you select it, come over to effect controls, and you can see under audio effects, it says volume, select volume, and it says level. Just bump up your levels and this will be useful. Now, another thing you should mention, you'll see, because we toggled the animation, it's also gonna to be toggled here. So we don't want that because what this is essentially doing is making the volume loud at four seconds. We need the volume louder right from the beginning. So we're gonna put that keyframe to the beginning and then next time when you do it, make sure the animations are unchecked and then just bump up that dB right at the beginning of your timeline. Now, if you ever wanna see what something looks like without something on your timeline, so for example, this text, we wanna get rid of it, you can see without deleting it, we can come here, press this I and it just removes it. Same for the video, press the I, removes it. Same for the audio. If you have more than one audio that you're testing out, maybe some background music, you can simply mute this audio or you can press solo to make sure that only that audio is playing. Now, the final thing I'm gonna be showing you is the exporting part of it. Um, I believe I've covered everything. I'm sorry if I forgot something. It just seems like there's a lot to cover here. Um, but I'm going to mark in and you can see this is what it will do. But I'm going to come to the end and I'm going to mark out like so. Now what this is, is render regions basically. So you can just drag it and you can choose how you want it. So you don't need to render the entire video if you don't need it. You can drag this to the part where you want to. So for example, this first clip down here. This part is now highlighted. If I right click up here, you can see we can clear the in and out, which will get rid of this in case you press it by mistake. Because I've done it quite a lot, the shortcut to bring this up is pressing X on your keyboard and it'll bring up these render regions. And of course, sometimes you don't need it and it's gonna be in the way. So from there, you would come over to file, export and media. So here are your formats. Uh, most likely you're gonna be with H264. Uh, the preset, you can pick how you want it. Usually, if I was going to pick a preset, I'd always go for 1080 30 right here. Export audio and export video, make sure they're checked. So, of course, the video and audio comes out, otherwise they won't. Output name, you can see that's what it's going to be saved as. What we want to do is change it to something else. So I'm going to put project, select save. Here is all the information about your video. And if you come down here, you can see... There are different uh, render options here, which will help you out. You can head over to the audio tab if you want to, and then everything else here, you don't need to touch. And then you have some effects that you can go on to if you need it. Make sure you use maximum render quality is selected. Down here at the bottom, it says the estimated file size is 86 megabytes. So it's fairly small. Actually, it's quite big for a 22 second video. So how do you make the file sizes smaller? Come over to video, come down. As you'll see, it says target bitrate and maximum bitrate. Turn these both down. You can see that's gone to 39 meg from 86. So just play around with this. Be aware though that your quality will get lost if you go very, very low. But from there, you would just select export and the video is gonna to begin to encode and it's going to export depending on the length of your video, it's gonna take some time. Hopefully you've been able to follow all of this and now hopefully you're able to edit in Premiere Pro. I know there's quite a lot to cover and I hope I've gone through everything you wanted me to. If there's anything I've missed, then let me know in the comments and I'll do a separate video on that. So the video just got exported. You can see here project properties and you'll see it turns out to be 11 megabytes. Playing it through. So you can see we created that blurriness and you can see the quality is actually really good. We turned that bit rate and maximum bit rate down quite a lot, but the quality has turned out really good. And there's the text sliding in, nice effect. Looks like Windows Movie Maker, but there we go. Now, hopefully I've covered everything that you wanted to see. I do apologize if I haven't, because you can tell there was a lot to cover, but um, hopefully this has been useful for you. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, rate, and peace.